name is Ed Pokes. I'm the general manager of LA Animal Services. Uh, this is my assistant general manager, uh, Linda Barr. Uh, we want to welcome you to our Foster North Bar. Foster Mom, Linda Barr. Uh, is everybody here a Foster? <laughs> we have some kids here. Really? Oh my God. I can get my wish. <laughs> uh, I want to welcome you to the North Central uh, Animal Care Center. Uh, how many people, this is your first time here? Well, if we get out of here early enough and there's still some daylight, uh, anybody that's maybe okay. interested in walking through and taking a tour, I'll be happy to take you on a tour of the facility. It really is quite extraordinary. Uh, so again, I want to thank you for being here this evening. Uh, we're here to discuss the uh, application and permit requirements for circuses and other wild acts and exhibitions. Uh, this is uh, the latest step in a long, a rather long process that began several months ago of meeting with stakeholders uh, who are interested in this kind of issue and working with people who are the animal handlers and the organizations who work with these animals and animal welfare organizations and animal rights people and people who really, on all sides of the issue, have real concerns uh, with respect to the animals and uh, want to see a process that works uh, well for the city of Los Angeles and for the animals that come into our city. And uh, I think we'll, well, thank you very much, bring it on up. Uh, Linda, did you have anything that you wanted to uh, share with Just one thing we want to explain is we're really pleased to see all of you here making comments. Um, if you received the notice, you probably know we're also accepting written comments. And for some of you who work with city government other times, it may seem a little similar to you to a environmental review type process. And that's kind of the steps we're taking. What we want to do today is discuss the proposed draft. This isn't what's in effect right now. This is just what's proposed. <clears throat> and there's extra copies if you didn't get one. Um, and what we want to do today is to take all of your feedback. We want to hear your comments. Um, we'll sort of count down here and make sure that we give everybody a good amount of time depending on how many people want to speak. If you want to speak, we definitely want your part here so that we can you know, decide if two minutes or five minutes or whatever is the right period of time. We want to hear your comments. If you don't get a chance to speak or you don't feel comfortable, you don't feel like you said everything you want to say, we're taking public comments in writing through this week. Thank you very much. Um, and we're happy to get written comments. Um, most of all, what I want to make sure that you understand is that this process to take this information will result only in more input to our Board of uh, Animal Services Commissioners. They're the ones that will consider and make the final decision on accepting this or modifications to this or a revised version of this or changing or revising it. Um, what we will provide to our commission is as uh, good a summary as we can of all the written comments we've received and all of the comments that you're going to give us today. That's why I'm going to flurry on the laptop. So we get a very good sense of what the concerns and comments are. We will incorporate written comments into a package so our commission will be able to see every all of the comments that have been provided. Um, some comments might lead to some revisions to this proposal, and that might be what the commission sees. They, uh, okay, a few changes already got made based on comments from today or comments in writing, and others will provide a, a list of possible of changes or amendments that the commission can make. The commission will take all of your comments, read about them, read our summary, read our responses, read the proposal, and it's the commission that will ultimately make the decision. So we really appreciate you coming and spending your time today. We will try to um, you know, get, get a very good sense of your comments, specifics. Again, you are also welcome to write. And I, some faces here, some people I know have already provided us with letters. Those letters will be part of the full package that's presented to the board to consider before they have to make their decisions. And that's where the tough spot will be. Yes. I just have a question. Would it be more effective? to have a written comment or a spoken comment, if you do want to send me a written comment in addition to, where would you send that? Um, you know what, I'll write it on the board, the address. Um, oh. um, I think that we will do the very best possible job we can to make sure that we summarize accurately the written, the verbal comments that you make today. If you want to also have a written comment, it will all be included in the package to the board. 
and what we may say is um, here's the list of people who spoke and here's the message and the, you know what they said at the meeting and then in parentheses or next to their name or something like that they also submitted a letter or this organization also submitted a letter or this organization sent us notes by email you know we have a couple of those too all right so that as our board looks at all of this data and input from so many interested parties they can also sort of sort out how many are saying what and what the common themes are i'm sure there will be some common themes and you can send your comments if you want to send written comments uh, by snail mail to this address or by email to my email address, and I'll make sure that it's included in the process. You know what, let me just have the fax number too. Okay. Uh, um, can also fax, so we have the whole dynamic, I guess. <laughs> okay, it looks as though, uh, if, and Madeline, do you mind if, I, if, if as people come one. in, could you ask them to sign in and give them a work? Thank you very much. Yeah, I need somebody I to help me. Minimum wage. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Has everybody filled out a card that wants to speak? It appears as though we have 10 speakers, so we were going to calculate the amount of time each speaker could have depending on how many people wanted to speak. So 10 speakers with five minutes uh, to get started. I think that's actually going to take. Does that sound start five minutes is an awfully long time and then uh, once we get through all the speakers we'll see how everybody's uh, holding up. Should I sit here? You certainly may. Okay. <laughs> okay. Our first speaker is Inger Epler. No, I go I, I go, have the other ones first. Okay. I want to go at the end. Yeah, you at the end. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You can't all say that though. <laughs> <laughs> please when you come in please sign in. And uh, I might have one of those speakers. Okay, Carrie Johnson. And I guess okay. where's, where is Carrie? I'm right here. Carrie, uh, how do we want to do this? Do we want people to stand up? Or would you rather come to the podium? So or would you, you rather come to the, the podium? I, you know, I, I didn't know that I would need to. I just put a speaker card in case I wanted to. But I will start off if you like, sure. just to get it started. Um, I thought you, everybody did a really good job of incorporating the information that you've gotten that you had before and some of the things I had were just sort of clarifications of, of some of the things and um, uh, one of them was um, on, on number one um, it says um, uh, it's it's uh, it, it says to keep the records where the animals are maintained that means their home base is that correct uh, yeah, that would be the idea. Yes. Yeah, I think that's what it meant. I just wanted to clarify. And then on um, on B one, at the location where the animals are maintained. At the, yeah, that means when they're, where they're maintained at home or where they're maintained when they're in Los Angeles. Um, the intent was home base. Yeah, but I think you raised a good point. So something at least to clarify one way or the other. Okay, that's that's how I thought it thought you meant. But, um, and then on one uh, D, the access to uh, firearms is that totally up to the applicant? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's if the applicant deems that okay. that kind of provision is necessary. It's, it's not okay. a requirement. And then on uh, on number seven. Um, the dated copies of any official notices of alleged violations and the administrative proceedings pending investigations. I, I wondered if that, sh should that be final? Because what if they're not, uh, what if they haven't done whatever, whatever they were accused of? Let me, I'm sorry, catching up. I was reading that. So that's, um, that's just to submit them. It's not like an um, a, a auto qualifier or disqualifier. It's informational. Okay. Number seven. Right. So, so in other words, they may turn out to be cleared or not cleared or whatever. This is informational. So if, if somebody turned in something, then you might ask for more information? or That's the idea behind number seven. Possible, yes. <clears throat> okay. And then on, um, on number 10, we're talking about the insurance. So if you get the yearly permit, would just, um, do you think adding the city of Los Angeles with whatever wording you want at, on your insurance rider if you come in more than one time, do you think that would suffice? Is that what that means? Yes. Okay. An additional, so you may just ask for an additional endorsement on an existing rider. 
Is that what you mean? Yes, yes. I think so. Okay, and have you have you decided, is the rider, will the rider sort of stay the same? I mean, this is sort of what I do anyway. The, so uh, the, the person, the other person on the other side also gets a permit. Well, do you think that will stay at about $150, or do you know yet? I have no idea. Okay. All right. You mean for the motion picture issue, right? No, for other, other, other kind of, but to pay the cost of the writer is what you're talking about, yes. right? I don't know. Okay. I have no idea. I mean, right. from our standpoint, the job of our risk city risk management might be to look at what the situation is and determine what the requirements are, what the details of the cost in between with the, the animal trainers, providers, and insurance companies. Oh, I wasn't talking about insurance anymore. I'm sorry. I was talking about the rider. You were calling the a yearly permit, and then you would get a rider for each additional job. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't make myself clear. Okay. But for, for, for the additional event that went on, do you think it would sort of be the same as what it is now? <clears throat> the way it works now? That, yes. Okay. The, I mean, there, there will be a, a fee for each event. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Four minutes. Very good. All right. Uh, next is uh, Mariana Tosca. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. I know what it is now. Um, over the last few, hi, I'm Mariana Tosca. Um, over the last few years, under the new management of LA Animal Services, we've seen our city blossom towards its true potential as a beacon of education and compassion, becoming a model for other cities in the state and across the nation. And you are all enthusiastically applauded for your efforts, your outstanding efforts with spay and neuter, microchipping, mobile adoptions, the international puppy mill crisis, farm animal protection, the list goes on and on and on. Last year, LA Animal Services established the first comprehensive permit requirements for animals used in entertainment, which held exhibitors accountable for animal care and public safety. Because of those well-crafted guidelines, Los Angeles made great strides with its vision, becoming an even more progressive city where the needs of both humans and animals were better served. The citizens and taxpayers of Los Angeles are a forward-thinking people who, especially in recent years, have invariably led the rest of the nation on issues of the greatest importance with regards to innovation and compassion. Having taken the appropriate path forward, we cannot allow eroding regulations to repel us backwards to a place of antiquation. Frankly, it's beneath a city as powerful and important as ours. We must not allow self-serving entities whose sole motivation is to turn a profit, regardless of any pain and suffering they cause, to reign supreme over what is right. We, the people of Los Angeles, look to you, Los Angeles Animal Services, animal services, not human services. We already have several departments in place that govern our protection. Animal services, serving the needs of animals. We are relying upon you to maintain those regulations that will not only protect animals, but also protect us, the taxpayers, from any future liabilities that will undoubtedly manifest from the lessening of these guidelines. I am entirely confident that you will do the right thing to protect the animals from abuse and neglect, to protect the taxpayers from fiscal crisis, and to protect the city itself from a tarnished reputation. Thank you for your time. Here, here. Oh. Uh, next <laughs> Thank you, Ed, very much for putting the amount of time and effort that you've been putting into this. Um, I'd like to yield some of my time later to Catherine Doyle, who has some written recommendations for which SPCA LA is also a signatory. But I agree with Mariana. I think that we cannot let the regulations be eroded. You couldn't apply for a driving permit here in LA and tell the motor vehicle officer that my uh, ID and my birth certificate are at home. Go find them. We need to make sure that we protect the animals, 
We need to make sure we protect the public. And we need to also protect the city from liability since we know we have strong regulations in place and we know the people who are motivated to erode those. So I'm asking you to put back the humane, you know, the humane standards, make the regulations for applying for a permit rigorous, keep the information on site where the animals are performing so that those of us you know, can properly enforce the laws. Thank you. Four minutes then to Catherine. Okay, thank you. The rest of the no. Okay, uh, Rachel Mintz. Um, hi, I uh, just got an email about this, and I think it's really wonderful how many people have showed up. Didn't have too much prepared, but a couple of points that I wanted to make. Um, as far as animals and entertainment, specifically cir circuses, um, there's been a, a lot of progression in some westernized countries a, as well as developing nations even that have far surpassed us and have even banned some circuses um, that include animals because of the constant um, you know, uh, violations that the circuses uh, have and how often that um, they are constantly, you know, violating um, their, the humane treatments to the exotic animals. Um, in so many other mediums, exotic animals are protected, but for some reason it seems that in the circus, where they have the most rigorous and difficult lives, it often is overlooked. Um, you know, the use of bull hooks is not anything that's going away, it's continued usage of it, and you know, there was so much uproar about Billy the Elephant, but he's just an elephant in the zoo, whereas these elephants endure way worse than, you know, even Billy could even fathom. I mean, if you put Billy in one of the circuses, he would be a lot more unhappy, I'm sure. Um, it's a place where families bring their children to, and right now it doesn't really seem like much of an environment that anybody would want to bring their kids to if the public knew what was going on behind the scenes. Um, LA and California specifically is known for being a progressive place, but the lack of regulations we've had thus far have set us back, so hopefully we'll be able to take a step in the right direction and get this going. So, thank you. Catherine Doyle. Oh, I don't need that. She can have mine too. She can have mine too. We love that. Oh, yeah. And we do have your letter. Yes. Your letter. Um, actually, what I'm going to be presenting here is, um, I'm not going to go through all of this, even though everyone's kindly giving me their time, um, but what we do have here, this um, document is um, comments on behalf of a wide group of signatories, including animal welfare organizations representing 200,000 Los Angeles residents, wildlife veterinarians, and international wildlife experts. Now, we're fully in support of creating the best application and permit requirements for circuses and other wild animal ex exhibitions possible. And I believe that LA can be a leader by demanding that animal exhibitors are fully accountable both for the safety of the public and consistently provide the most humane care and treatment of the animals. However, the current draft, sadly, is not going to achieve any of these goals. In fact, I see that the draft of the regulation of the requirements are actually a step back for us. In fact, we were quite surprised and concerned that this uh, draft has significantly weakened key conditions that are vital to the protection of animals and the public. And in fact, the current draft is little to change the status quo of animals used in circuses and animal acts in Los Angeles. Now, instead of providing a document that further clarifies conditions contained in previous drafts and more effectively protects animals and the public from harm, this document presents serious deficiencies. And this includes vague and arbitrary language that leaves the city of Los Angeles open to greater liability, such as uh, possibly requiring an exhibitor to file quote unquote, some elements of a plan critical to human safety, that being the emergency, the animal escape plan. 
um, confusing and contradictory information, uh, despite the fact that an application must be made and doc documentation produced 14 days prior to a permitted event, with the exception of you know filming. Um, the current draft states that the required documentation must be at the location where the animals are maintained. And quite honestly, I mean that's so. How are you going to be looking at these documents? I mean, is someone going to be traveling there? I mean, obviously something has to be filed with the city of Los Angeles. So anyway, this infers, of course, that documents will not be obtainable until the time. Well, to tell the truth, I was thinking that the documents had to be kept at the event location. I didn't realize it was at the home location for the exhibitors. And I think that's completely unacceptable. Um, it's standard for an entity seeking permission from a government agency to turn over all required documents to the permitting agency for review in order for that agency to make an informed decision of whether or not to issue the permit. So it's crucial that the documentation be filed with the city. And also, lack of a paper trail that would allow the city to indemnify or even defend itself against legal action. Um, sorry. Um, this includes common sense items such as emergency plans in the event of an animal escape, and proof that an animal does not carry a disease that is transmissible to humans. As it stands, there's no requirement that essential documentation be filed with the city. Documents, in fact, documents could be altered or even replaced after the fact. So, reliance on consistent, um, the last point here, is also um, we have a problem with the reliance on con in inconsistently applied USDA terminology as a measure of humane treatment. And uh, by this, I'm referring to the uh, direct non-compliances. Um, because this assures, right now, the way it's written, it ensures that just about any exhibitor is going to be able to comply with the proposed permit requirements. And I don't think that was the intention of these requirements. So um, you know, we're recommending that the following comments and changes I'm presenting to you now um, be seriously considered um, and that modifications are made. So thank you. Hi, I have nothing really prepared, but I always speak as some of you know. Um, I don't agree with any of this because I don't think animals should be allowed to entertain. I am not an entertainer. And if you saw me entertain, you would hope that I wouldn't. <laughs> okay? So, all the animals that come into circuses, they were not born to entertain. They were abused, hurt, chained, used bull hooks on, and then they were entertaining us. Well, they were never entertaining me. I think it really sucks. I shouldn't, the only permit that should be allowed here is a permit not to have animals in Los Angeles entertain Thank you. anybody. Yeah. $150 an animal when the mayor today announced that the city has one half a billion dollar deficit. We don't even know what the whole budget is yet, but the whole, a deficit of a half a billion dollars and people like this woman here from How Trump Will Travel is going to pay $150 an elephant and collect God knows how much money would come in and collect money on, on the backs of elephants that should not be made, allowed to entertain. That's my position. Uh, Brian Bunnell. Um, my, my name is Brian Bunnell, and uh, I just I've worked with various circuses as an elephant groom for about two years. I've also spent time behind the scenes with just about every single circus in the United States. Now I work for, as an investigator for animal protection uh, organizations. Um, I'm urging you to adopt strong permit requirements for these animal exhibitors. I have particular concerns about item 6A, which addresses USDA non-compliances, requiring that an exhibitor not be cited for any repeat, direct, non-compliant item within the past five years. This is way too narrow. The permit requirements should take into consideration any USDA violation that affects the health and welfare of animals through such actions as an inappropriate provision of veterinary care and inappropriate handling. My concern is solely based upon my experiences in the circus where I discovered that it's rare that an exhibitor gets inspected, much less gets caught. So when the USDA actually cites an exhibitor for any item that affects animal health and welfare, it should be taken very, very seriously. <coughs> it was my experience that violations are constantly occurring at the circuses, at every circus I worked at. It's just, it's just that no one ever sees them. 
If you can put a camera in the place, you catch them breaking federal laws every single day, I guarantee you. Most of the time, the circus knows the USDA inspectors are coming. With one circus, we were feeding the tigers rancid meat. When we got word the USDA was, inspector was on his way, we replaced it with fresh food. The inspector never suspected a thing. It's also my experience that some USDA inspectors become very familiar and not friends with the animal exhibitors, and they're therefore more likely to turn a blind eye to the violations because they're, they're buddies. The circus personnel with whom I worked were utterly dismissive of USDA inspectors, including those in management. These are the same people who would say that the only way to train an elephant is to beat them and to shock them with prods until they drop. I know of no inspector who's ever witnessed a training session, and that's when the worst abuses actually occur. With these permit requirements, you have a unique opportunity to significantly improve the level of animal care and handling in the circus industry, as well as protect the animals and the public when exhibitions occur in Los Angeles. I strongly urge you to especially re reconsider item 6A. Thank you for your time. Alexia, who's on? Hello, I'm, I'm here. Hi, my name is Alexia Guzan, and I am a school teacher. Um, first and foremost, I would like to thank you. I, for everything that you do and for everything that you continue to do, I commend you. Um, and I will continue to look to you to do what is not just right, but what is in your power to do the utmost to protect these animals. Um, I couldn't word it any better than you did, girl. <laughs> I was like, whoa! And Catherine, you, you pretty much said things just so eloquently and so soulfully. Thank you. Um, and I do hope that we can look to you to make the appropriate modifications to protect these animals and to ensure that they are protected to the best of our abilities at this time. But I will continue to have a dream that these animals will someday not have to entertain and enjoy the life that they enjoy. That's all. Karen Bonadio. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, <coughs> I'm so against the animals for entertainment. Uh, people that know, that know me, that you know how I feel about this. Um, I had a chance to be at the opening day trial against Ringling Brothers for their abuse to the Asian elephant in Washington, D.C., which is a federal case. And we're all just crossing our fingers because I think the day has finally come that people finally, they are, they are paying attention. No matter whether they believe in what we say and vice versa, I do believe that people, whatever, whatever we're saying now, it's, 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 resonating and if it if it doesn't happen now or if it happens in a year from now or two years from now it is going to happen I believe the change is here and it's going to happen and it's just us you know continuing on but my my concern too is the elephants that come into uh, the city of Los Angeles uh, these large animals it's not just when they're out there performing it's how they're treated during the time that they're waiting to perform the chains, the bull hooks, uh, are some of these animals in solitary confinement? You know, what, what is going on? My other thing is, how can I, as a citizen of Los Angeles, if I see some uh, animal being treated uh, in, in a state of neglect or something, can I have a phone number that I can call someone on a weekend and say, I'm here at the Shriner Circus and I... This horse fell down, and they, they made it get back up, and it's, it's limping around the ring. I'd like to know if there's a place or someone I can call to get immediate help. You know, if I see something that's not okay, that's what I want to, you know, be able to do. And the other thing, I, you know, this whole thing with the diseases that, that humans are now giving to animals. And, you know, I love human beings, but I really love animals, too, and I, I'm really worried about them. This whole thing with MRSA now, with the San Diego Zoo and the baby elephant, we've got to start taking protections. There's been people, <coughs> I've even seen on Fox News, uh, doctors coming out and saying, you know, the way zoos and how, you know, animals for performance, performancing, performances are being handled now, you know, it's a wake-up call. They've got to start wearing gloves, these people that are handling these, these elephants, which was the, you know, the example. 
for the San Diego Zoo. But I'm just, you know, I sometimes I just get so filled up with what I want to say because there's just so much inside on how I want to care and, and make sure these animals are treated humanely. That's what I care about. So that's it. <laughs> I also have a lot to say about this, so it would take me days to finalize, so I'm going to make it short. Um, violence and crimes like animal cruelty, I consider the lowest of the lowest scum taking place in our society. And we try to uh, eliminate the violence, right? I assume all of us know that crimes to animals, animal cruelty, like circuses and entertainment, are all uh, violent behavior. And we pass that on to the children. What are we teaching them? It's okay to be cruel? I think it's very wrong. I'm asking you please to do the right thing and um, help us fight cruelty and violence in the general in our society. And um, asking you to take this extremely serious. It's a very serious matter. And it starts with how we treat the animals, and that's about it. Um, what takes place behind the scene, that's another story. You know, when the inspect to have inspectors coming doesn't really make it. We all know what's happening then. Like he worked in circuses before, right? He knows what's going on. If you really want, I could even may probably get you an undercover video footage. So you can see with your own eyes. Okay? Would you like one? Certainly. You can certainly submit. Yeah. Because we have, we can't close our eyes to this anymore. The violence, the, it's the, I don't understand why we still have to come here and fight for this. I took off work early to come here today. I want to see cruelty to animals. <coughs> and it affects the society very badly. What messages are we sending out? I'm asking you, personally, I want to ban all entertainment, all circuses, no animal free circuses. That's my personal opinion about how we treat our animals. It's cruel, and we know that. We know, all, everybody knows that. Unless they are sociopathic or are not able to feel empathy. I have wondered what's going on in people's minds, and I, I don't really know. Is it denial? Well, in the name of profit, that's another ugly thing. That's the ugliest of the ugly. So please adopt the original draft, since that's what the meeting is about, about the permits. But personally, I, I see animal-free circuses and no um, entertainment. Uh, we see also Sigfrid and Roy, what happened there. Um, what, what, what is that all about? It's abuse to animals. One day he got attacked. And you saw what happened. It's a clear example on what can happen how, when we treat animals that are cruel and are abusive. So I'm asking you to please stop it. That's my question. Ban animal in entertainment. Let them get creative and put on some other entertainment where they can perform themselves or people that can have a choice that wants to perform. Don't involve the animals in this, please. So anybody else that has a speaker card? Very quickly, uh, I want to acknowledge a, a special uh, distinguished guest that we have here this evening uh, from uh, Council Member Tony Cardenas' office, uh, Macaria Forrest. Macaria, can you have a special <coughs> Macaria for being here, too. Can I ask a question? Um, <laughs> <laughs> my hesitation is that we'll be here all night. Yeah. So if we did that. That's why we wanted a sort of a formal opportunity for everybody to submit okay. thoughtful considerations of how we want to draft this document for the city of Los Angeles. And I want to thank everybody who took the time out of your very busy schedules, and I acknowledge that and recognize that, uh, to provide the kind of input that you have. And uh, as we said earlier, we will take this back with uh, recommendations to our commission. Um, and uh, who will ultimately set policy uh, with respect to this. So stay involved, uh, and uh, uh, I suspect that, uh, well, certainly you have cut your contact information so that when this does go to the commission, you will be alerted so that you can be there if you want to be there. Okay. I have one more comment just for the record. 
which is basically that. Yeah. Sure. No, this is very. Well, I have time left. Got six minutes. I, yeah, I've got probably another thirty minutes. Better than me. No, I don't need to say. No, just basically to that, I hope the department does take into consideration. I mean, the fact there are so many people here from the animal, you know, from the humane community who are very concerned about this issue and do want to see the strongest requirements possible. And I think that, like I said, even though a lot of people may not know the ins and outs and the details of you know what we're dealing with here, I mean, I think there is the overall um, belief that we have to do more for animals that are brought into our city and you know animals that and people who perform <coughs> animals in profit here. And so again, I'm just hoping that the city does take into consideration, like I said, first, certainly the number of people who are here and uh, representing the human community. So even if they don't speak. I want to thank you, everybody. I just want to know how can I find out what the term is being made? Did that's too cheap? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, there is a process going forward, uh, and it's. Uh, How could I be part of that process? I have an accounting background. <laughs> yeah, perfect at that. I think that what we should do is cover that. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, I, I'll be hanging around afterwards if anybody has any specific questions for me. I, I just want to make sure because there's people in the doorway and is everyone who wants a chance to speak get a chance to speak. Some people back here didn't get. Okay. So you know what? Let's just take a minute or two. And there are speaker cards back there. So and also a sign up list just if you're here and want to register that you're here. Um, let's just take a minute or two and I think I a lady has a question. Want to know why? <coughs> <excuse> me, <coughs> why were the regulations watered down to start with? Well, if I could explain a little bit about the process. Three years ago, there were no regulations. Two years ago, there were no regulations. The city, if you wanted a permit, you just came and, and you got a permit. So this has been a very deliberative process uh, initiated by the department to come up with reasonable expectations that uh, speak to all of our sensibilities, uh, whether they be from the business perspective as well as the animal welfare community's perspective. Uh, you know, trying to, uh, we're a big city, four million people, and there's a lot of concerns. And Catherine's point's well taken that uh, for whatever reason, we've got a lot of animal welfare, animal rights people that to attend this meeting, and, and we do recognize that, and we're very thankful for that. But we did get a lot of written comment as well from people from who come from all over the country to get permits to generate income for the city of Los Angeles. We're really trying our best to come up with something that's very, very sensitive to the, the needs of the animals uh, that come to the city. I, I really appreciated the one comment that Animal Services is the one department that speaks on behalf of the animals, uh, officially, if you will. Uh, they come into the city of Los Angeles. So that's not lost on us. We're very cognizant of that. So we appreciate your patience. Uh, so, we, so can they ban bullhooks? I mean, because if, if it's done, if, like, if we're concerned about the well-being of the animals, I mean, that would be the most sensible thing. They're like 30 pounds, they have a knife on the end of it. I mean, I would think that that would be... We, we can certainly address that in our report to the, to the commission. Okay, one final comment. Uh, Mark? Yes, it's Mr. very Mason? Short. Yes, I'm scared of public speaking. <laughs> but I just wanted to reiterate the points that this young lady made. Why are we even entertaining? Why are we why are we faced with this issue? We have wonderful, wonderful creatures that are suffering, and I'm not overstating it. I'm not sure if you have viewed any videos of what goes on, but it is what if you view these videos, it literally renders me, and I'm sure other people, people in my office, non-functional. It's so shocking. Why are we having to revisit this? Because it's for money, for money. You know, people make money on this. Who are we? Why are we doing this? Let's let these poor animals have their lives basically to themselves without pain and suffering. <coughs> Good Lord. Let's do it. Oh, that's the best all night. Oh. Well, again, I want to thank everybody for coming. And if anybody has any specific questions, uh, you can our services. Uh, I'm still here. Uh,